Hello and welcome to another video from avforums.com. This time we're going to be looking at the picture settings we got when calibrating the review sample of the Samsung QE65 JU7000. And there's a link to that review in the description. The first thing you need to do, of course, is press the menu button on your remote, which instantly brings up the picture menu. Scroll across, choose the movie picture mode for the most accurate images. And this is one very bright TV. Um, so we've set the backlight to 8, which gives about 140 CDM peak light output, which is kind of in between a dark room and a light room setup. And it'll go to about 350 CDM if you want to watch it outside, perhaps. Contrast we left at 90, which is the default. Brightness is also at the default of 45. Sharpness we reduced to zero to avoid unwanted ringing on uh, high quality sources. Colour we've left at default because there's a colour management system and it was pretty close out of the box. The tint is really not needed. And there's a handy little setting if you want to copy all these settings across to other inputs. And to the picture size. And the picture size assuming you've got a 169 source to 169. Fit to screen actually also works pretty effectively, but to be sure you're not zooming in and losing resolution of that on. Go back into the main picture menu. 3D settings were left at default. That's a picture in picture function. Advanced settings now get the pause button at the ready. Dynamic contrast off because this just uh, blows out whites, crushes blacks. The higher you set it, the more it does so. It gives you a really punchy image, but you really don't need it. Similar for the black tone. Flesh tone we can leave alone because we can do our adjustments in the color management system in a moment. Here we go, this is the colour space custom. These are our settings, we're just going to whiz through these for red, green, blue, yellow, which is slightly out of order from usual, cyan and magenta. And we'll back out of there, to the back into the advanced settings. And here we have white balance. Now with this TV, we only need to use the two-point controls, which makes things nice and easy. In any case, to be honest, using the ten-point controls, copying someone's settings is probably very futile. So that's the white balance controls, which gave us delta errors of less than one across the board. So we left the ten-point alone. Gamma reduced to minus one, which gave us a rule of flat 2.35 response, which is very suitable for a dark room. And we can go back now. And then we'll go into the picture options submenu. Just quickly look at these. Color tone warm two, that's the default of the movie mode and gives you the closest to D65, which is the industry standard for white. Digital clean view off, MPEG noise filter off. By all means, have a go with those if you're um, watching some lower quality sources. HDMI, UHD color, or we'll just leave that at auto. There are no sources to, uh, to fit with that at this current time. Film mode, you'll only find this available on interlaced sources. Um, so we use Auto 2 for best film cadence detection. If you've got progressive source, that you won't be able to pick that. Auto Motion Plus, this is one to have a play with. We'd we'll definitely leave it off for um, movies. It just gives an overly smooth look. If you want to mess about with it with sport, I'd probably recommend either the clear or a very low custom setting. So we'll leave that off for best sources. And on clean view, we're not watching the analog source, so no need to turn that on. Smart LED is the local dimming system inside the JU7000. It's pretty good, but if you start messing with more than low, you can introduce haloing, which kind of ruins the dynamic range. And that's just a setting to turn the picture off to save energy, if you're just listening to the radio or something. And that's it. That completes the look at the review settings for the Samsung JU7000. Remember you can check out more reviews at avforums.com forward slash reviews. You can see more videos at avforums.com forward slash videos. Why not follow us on Twitter? And you could also like our Facebook page. Thanks for watching.